Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1121, the treasure chest, and you can check out all of our die designs at karenberniston.com. The treasure chest die is not itself a pop-up, but it is interactive because the lid opens. And then, of course, you can fill that with the treasure that comes in the set, as I've done here. But there is also an add-on treasure charm set, as well as an add-on treasure words set. And you can see that treasure word set used here. So the treasure chest works great as a standalone die. But I did design the treasure chest so that it fits perfectly on the parcel pop-up. So that die set is sold separately, but it's the perfect choice when you want to animate your treasure chest and have treasure coming up and out as the card opens. Okay, I'll start first with basic assembly. There are 11 dies in the set, and I'm going to choose the two that make the base and the lid. You'll notice they have a wood grain texture to them that will actually press into the cardstock when you die cut it. You can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die, and today I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6. Okay, if you use a little bit thicker cardstock, then you'll probably be able to see that cool pattern just tone on tone. So you can see how it's just been pressed into the piece, and you can definitely just leave it that way. The one with the curved sides and the tab at the top is the lid, and you'll want to cut two of those. One way that you can highlight the texture on that treasure chest would be to use a brayer and some ink. Now I chose a white ink since I have a dark cardstock color and I'm just going to roll that across using the brayer as many times as I need to to get the color that I like, but it will leave all of the area down in the grooves the original cardstock color. And then I just repeat that process for the other two pieces. There are two dies in the set to create the trim, and they have an optional stencil or emboss feature. If you'd like to emboss those, then I suggest with a brand new die that you do the embossing step first. And you can just put right into a YouTube search what is the sandwich for embossing a wafer thin die using your machine. So the embossing step gave me the raised little dots, and then now it's easy to switch my machine back to a cutting sandwich, sink the dies down into the grooves, and send them back through to cut. My favorite glue is Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive. I have it in my fine tip bottle. This one's the 18 gauge, the yellow tip, which is a little bit wider than the blue. And I love that I use that for all my projects. And what I'm doing is just adding the trim piece to the lid. Now, since I had used that pigment ink, I'm going to just go ahead and clip this and let it dry. Then I'll do the same for the base of the treasure chest. So the glue just goes around the perimeter and the trim goes into that glue and it will line up perfectly. Okay, back on the lid, I'm going to fold the tab that's up at the top to the back. So that's going to be the hinge that allows the lid to open. And if you've used a thicker cardstock like I have, you may want a bone folder to really reinforce that fold. For the back lid, I actually don't need the tab, not for this type of assembly. So I would just take my scissors and trim off that tab. Then I just need to add glue to that tab on the first lid and then glue it up behind the second one. Clips are optional but handy and you can find them usually in the kitchen gadgets aisle. I have not used any adhesive under this little thin strip in the middle on the base because that should be formed into a little loop as you glue it down. That will hold the lock in the key and if you plan to make a closure. So you just need something small and round to work it around. I've used my paper piercer but a toothpick or a little small dowel that would work. And then you just need a dot of adhesive at the base to hold it down. So no adhesive under the part where you've formed it into a little half circle. There is a die to cut a row of coins and I've cut that out of a metallic gold paper. And then I'm just going to add some glue across the bottom of those coins and glue it up behind the base of the treasure chest. Now all this left is to glue that inside the lid, but as I'm looking at it, I've decided I think I want that brown to go around the inside as well. So I need to cut another trim piece, but technically I don't need the center part, I just need the sides. So I'll glue those on just a little decoration before I get the base put inside the treasure chest. Okay, and then to glue these two pieces together, it's just a little glue across the bottom edge of that opening lid and then place the base into the glue. But I wanna work pretty quickly here so that I can close the lid and make sure that the latch goes right over the top of that little loop that I made so I can move that base around until it's lined up perfectly. 
So that's the basic assembly of an opening treasure chest. I am noticing all of the pigment ink that the back of my lid picked up from my craft mat, so I think I will tone that down just a bit with some brown ink. The set includes a little lock and a little key die. And when you put the key over the top of the lock and then you slide the lock through the loop on the base of the treasure chest, it just kind of hangs there decoratively. Always a good idea just to add a little spot of glue underneath the lock or the key or both to make sure that they don't come out. Since I only used glue at the very base of the lid, I can still slide in another row of gold coins behind the first one. And then I just get to have fun filling the treasure chest with treasure. There is a die in the set that makes a little mound of sand or dirt for the treasure chest to sit on. And then I decided to make a little closure for mine. So that's just a little dowel tied onto the lid with some twine. So you can get those little dowels at the craft store, but you could also just use a toothpick. Included in the set are the pearls, the diamonds, and the crown. But I used the Word Set 11 treasure for the greeting. I haven't decided where this is going yet, probably on the front of a card, but that little dowel just slides through the loop to keep it closed. Okay, so that is the standalone assembly of the treasure chest. Next, I'll show how you can animate the treasure chest using the Sold Separately Parcel Pop-Up die set. And I'm going to feature a few more dies on this card as well. Another fun effect you can get with this die in ink is to pounce ink directly on the die before you die cut. And then what it'll do is it will press that ink down into the grooves and give you that two-tone effect where this time the ink is down into the texture and with the brayer technique the ink was up on top. And do just make sure that you have a rag handy to get that ink off of your dies immediately afterward. Another effect you can try with an embossed trim piece is to choose a core cardstock. So that means the inside part is a different color, in this case white. And if you take a sanding block to the dots after embossing, then it will take off the color and reveal the core. Okay, I assembled my front lid in the usual manner with the tab at the top. Now normally you would cut off the tab of the second lid, but when you're using it with the parcel pop-up, I actually like to leave the tab on the second lid, but not fold it. And it just creates a little bit of extra height for the lid that's going to raise up in the air. So just gluing that tab up behind the second lid and I really don't have to worry that when it's closed, it doesn't line up perfectly. You never actually see it closed when you're using the parcel pop-up. It is going to raise up just as soon as the card is opened. For this one, I've decided to add a decorative trim piece to the inside of the lid as well. Then I chopped up a third lid trim piece so that I could get the side pieces that I needed for the back lid and then with the leftover straight piece, I just went ahead and put it up in that white area above. Adding the trim to the base of the treasure chest is the same exact process, including making the little loop in the center to hold the lock and key. And this time I chose a glitter cardstock for the row of coins, and I want to have one row of coins glued up behind the base before I start assembling the pop-up. The best way to find assembly videos for our die sets is to go to karenberniston.com and then search in the search box for the die you're looking for. You will find those assembly videos right on the product page. I am going to teach the assembly of the parcel pop-up here in this video, but if you need a more in-depth look, you'll want to go watch those other videos. Okay, starting with the slider arm, I'm going to fold the side reinforcing tabs to the back. Then there are horizontal folds. There's this one here that's a valley and the one at the top is a mountain. So you can see that makes kind of a little accordion fold down. For the upper reinforcing panel, that actually gets glued down. So I can just add my glue all over that reinforcing panel and then just press it down or hold it with a clip if I don't want to have to hold it. Okay, turning that around, I am not going to glue down the other reinforcing panel yet. Instead, I am going to work first on getting this piece up and into those notches. 
Now here's something that isn't shown in the assembly video, but I tend to do it on all my parcel pop-ups now. I tend to reinforce the bread clip area. So this little area of the die right here that has the little T cut out, I go ahead and cut that again out of any other piece of cardstock. Then I just trim straight up to remove just what I call the bread clip area. It just reminds me of those little tabs that you use to hold bread closed. So the main reason to do this is because it strengthens up those little small tabs at the bottom and makes them a little stronger. But it also actually helps a little bit with the operation. It tends to want to slide down a little easier if you have that bread clip area doubled. So I just pretty much do it all the time now. Okay, for the little tab at the bottom, I'm going to choose one. I'll choose the right one since I'm right-handed and I'm going to fold that over so that I have a little bit of a wider opening there. Then I'm going to bring my slider arm up through here and wiggle that left notch into the notch. So the notches are in the notches. Then I have to hold, pinch down, that piece that I just folded over so that I can wiggle it through the notch and then unfold. So now that's going to trap the slider arm in the notches. And you can see it just kind of hanging there. What I want to do is fold this down flat. So remember that top fold was a mountain fold, but the back one was a valley. So it's basically kind of accordion folded down flat again. I can choose to either use the skinny rectangle or the one that's a little bit wider as my sliding piece. And I just chose the one that was a little bit wider, but they're both the exact same length. And this is going to attach to that upper portion of the slider arm lined up with the top edge. So top edge goes to top edge. Adding the sliding piece now is actually a little different than the usual assembly. I went ahead and did it first before I folded up the big box. So now to get it so that the bottom edge will be in the box, I basically need to kind of unfold my slider arm to bring that rectangle up so that the bottom edge can be tucked behind the pop-up box. So see, I've just tucked it through the slot now. Okay, turning to the back side with everything in the flat position, what I'm wanting to do is have this little tab sandwiched between those two layers and you can see this big distance between them. The way I make that distance disappear is I work the folds that make the big pop-up box. So I bring the thin arms up at the end in the back, then I find the other end of the thin arms and fold back the other way. So by working those folds, now when I turn the piece around and lay everything flat, then everything lines up now and I can in fact trap that little small tab in between the layers as I glue together my reinforcing panel of the slider arm. So it's a little bit like a fun puzzle to put the parcel together, but you get really good at it. What I want to do is just coat the inside of that piece with glue and then making sure everything's flat, then I just get that small tab into the glue at the bottom, making sure that it's lined up with the right edge so that I can still close the reinforcer and glue it over the top. And that will trap that little small tab between the layers. There is just one more fold to find in this pop-up. It's right here at the seam. It's basically the bottom edge of the box. And when you fold it, make sure that your fingers go behind so that you're only folding the cardstock, that front layer of cardstock. You're not trying to fold through your slider arm. See, if you had it all together and tried to fold it, you might try to fold through both layers. But you just want to fold the front. And that's going to make the box and then your slider arms in the back. And once it gets installed in the card, it will start sliding that little arm up and out of the box as the card opens. I want to go ahead and add the treasure chest base to the front of the box before I put it inside the card. And to do that, I'm just adding glue all over the front of the box, but I'm not going all the way to the bottom because the treasure chest isn't that tall. I will fill in that extra area with sand later, but for now, I'm just getting basically the edge of the top of the chest itself is kind of lined up with the edge of the pop-up. You can see right there, the coins are sticking up higher. Now, the reason I wanted that treasure chest base on the pop-up is now I have access to be able to add some tape over that seam. If I didn't tape that edge, then it could become a catch point depending on what I put on my slider arm that comes up and out of the box. As it slides back down, something might catch against that hard edge. So what the tape does is it just makes it much softer and usually whatever you put on your slider arm can just slide right across the tape. 
My card is a top fold A2, so four and a quarter by 11 scored at five and a half inches. And then I just decorated the inside with some pattern paper and a sand colored cardstock for the floor. With my pop-up base laid flat, what I want to do is add the glue to the base of the pop-up. So you can see that little section right there that looks like a pair of pants or trousers that just needs glue all over it. And then the pop-up is going to go face down with the little legs of the trousers just going right into the fold of the card. And I am just going to center it. Giving my glue just a second to set up, you can see how that's going to look now. The base is attached, but I still want to keep everything flat. And with the parcel pop-up, what gets attached to the back wall is two, what I like to say, L sections. So you can put the glue out on the side as an L and a backwards L, but all of the center part needs to remain without adhesive. That's where the slider arm has to be able to raise up and down. And then I just carefully close against that exposed adhesive. And since I am using glue, I'm trying to be patient so that it doesn't pop right off of there. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just go in and pinch where it should be attached and just make sure that I feel like it is attached before I open the card the first time. But then what will happen is that as you open it, the slider arm will slide up and out of the box. And if this is your first introduction to the parcel pop-up, I would definitely suggest that you go check out the Karen Berniston Pop-Up Peeps Facebook group because there are a ton of cool ideas being posted by the peeps using the parcel pop-up. Okay, adding glue all over the back of my hinged lid, the best location is just to have the lid butt up against the pop-up in the back. So don't have it cover the edge, just have it meet the edge. And that seems to be a great location to have that lid be high enough to where it doesn't obscure your treasure. Now you can put a little slight bend in the lid that might help it where it hits the card and then wants to slide closed. Okay, and remember the treasure chest set comes with that piece of sand, and that is sized to fill in the rest of the parcel pop-up when you're using these two dies together. So obviously it can be used independently, but it is that perfect size to fill in the rest of the area so it doesn't look like your treasure chest is floating in the air. So whatever you have on the rectangle sliding up and out of the box has to fit. So I needed to trim down those gold coins so that I could make a mound that would fit down in the box in between those two arms. Okay, and then to add it to the sliding rectangle, you know, glue is probably the best for that since you kind of have to reach in there to add the glue to the rectangle. But the main thing to know is that you cannot have your sliding item go any lower than the bottom edge of that sliding rectangle. So that's your bottom limit. You can definitely have things go higher, but for it to collapse down into the card, it cannot go any lower than the bottom edge of that sliding rectangle. And then it's just a matter of making sure that everything is operating smoothly and it's doing great. So I like to build up the treasure in the back and on the sides to kind of disguise that hard seam between the pop-up and the lid. But I like to stay away from the middle part. That's covered by the raising treasure anyway, and that way I don't have to worry about kind of pressing down my bread clip area and making it not operate as nicely. So I use, tend to just use partial treasure and just see I do it on the sides. So this time, in addition to the pieces that come with the treasure chest, I added in a few of the treasure charms. And that's just a great choice if you want to have lots of treasure. Okay, then at the bottom I used the new treasure word set and made it say, you are treasured. And notice that I'm leaving the area where the lid comes down clear of any catch point so that it can slide right across the card and closed. For the front of the card, I'm using our new pattern plate swirls, and I've mixed in a couple of the squares that come with the parcel pop-up, and then also wove in some of the treasure charms. And now that I have that whole thing put together, I just need to use my glue everywhere so that I can attach it completed to the front of the card. And then the hello on the front of the card came out of our word set six. My finished card measures four and a quarter by five and a half and will mail in a standard A2 envelope. And a greeting of you are treasured is just so universal you can use that for a lot of different themes. Okay, I know this video is already really long, but I want to show a couple cards by our very talented design team. 
Fran Sabad made this card where the treasure chest doesn't open on the front. It's actually glued shut and you can see that the mermaid has the key and then when you open it, the crab has stolen the key, unlocked the treasure chest, and then it's animated on the parcel pop-up. I am just loving all of the details in this card. Here's a card that I made, and those sea animals really do work wonderfully with the treasure chest. Here's one by Kelly Booth where she's incorporated the palm trees in the tropical scene as well. And what I really like about this are all the details, including the lid being trapped open so that it doesn't close at all. That allows her to create quite a layered scene on the lower section, including the sharks that are styled like orcas, because she doesn't have to worry about anything catching the latch of the lid. She's actually just trapped that in the up position. And then check out this idea by Karen Aiken. What she's done here is actually hinged the lid to the treasure chest on the lower portion of the parcel pop-up so that it does open and reveal some treasure, but the crab is actually sliding up on the parcel pop-up from behind the treasure chest. So just lots of ways that you can combine these two dies. But don't forget that you can use the treasure chest as a standalone die. It works wonderfully on the fronts of cards like this one by Lois Bach. And then Frances Byrne shows how she can mix in some of her favorite stamps from other companies with our dies to create some really great layered scenes. The Treasure Chest die set is available now from our website, karenberniston.com, as well as a lot of your favorite online and local retailers. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.